Welcome to chapter a day. Today I'm doing Romans chapter two. So I'm just going to use um, a youth Bible just because I like how the wording is. Um, let me know in the comments if you like this Bible or if you'd want me to go back to the version I was using before. Um, anyways, cha Romans chapter two. Well, you may be saying what terrible people you have been talking about, but wait a minute, you are just as bad. When you say they are wicked and should be punished, you are talking about yourselves, for you do these very same things. And we know that God, in justice, will punish anyone who does such things as these. Do you think that God will judge and condemn others for doing them and overlook you when you do them too? Don't you realize how patient he is being with you? Or don't you care? Can't you see that he has been waiting all this time without punishing you to give you time to turn from your sin? His kindness is meant to lead you to repentance. But no, you won't listen. And so you are saving up terrible punishment for yourselves because of the, your stubbornness in refusing to turn from your sin. For there is going to come a day of wrath when God will be the just judge of all the world. He will give each one whatever his deeds deserve. He will give eternal life to those who patiently do the will of God, seeking for the unseen glory and honor and eternal life that he offers. But he will terribly punish those who fight against the truth of God and walk in evil ways. God's anger will be poured out upon them. There will be sorrow and suffering for Jews and Gentiles alike who keep on sinning. But there will be glory and honor and peace from God for all who obey him. Whether they are Jews or Gentiles, for God treats everyone the same. He will punish sin wherever it is found. He will punish the heathen when they, when they sin, even though they never had God's written laws. For down, for down in their hearts they know right from wrong. God's laws are written within them. They, their own conscience accuses them or some, sometimes excuses them and God will punish the Jews for sinning because they have his written laws but don't obey them. They know what is right and don't do it. After all, salvation is not given to those who know what to do unless they do it. God gave Adam a conscience which was uncorrupted before he sinned. After that, it was depraved and corrupted but not totally erased. Conscience serves as a witness to the truth. But moral choice tells whether it has been obeyed. A man's own conscience accuses him of sin, and it will condemn him when the books are opened. Every mouth will be silenced, and God's judgment will be seen to be true and just. The believer who is walking in the Spirit will repent of and confess any known sin immediately, in this way, it is possible to have a blameless conscience, which is void of offense. Conscience is educated and perfected by faith through the atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ. The law of God is the revealed expression of the will of God that will be imperfectly manifested in conscience and perfectly in the word of God, the scripture. The Ten Commandments constitute the moral law, the Judicial and ceremonial laws of the Old Testament were given with a specific people in mind, the Jews, and for a specific period in their history. The moral law is timeless, for it concerns itself with the permanent relations of man with respect to marriage, sex, property, and, fi and fil filial obe obedience. Apologize, I don't know that word. The law is holy, right, and good. Faith in Christ does not release anyone from the demands of God's law. The day will surely come when at God's command, Jesus Christ will judge the secret lives of everyone, their in, in, innermost thoughts and motives. This is all part of God's great plan, which I proclaim. You Jews think all is well between yourselves and God because he gave his laws to you. You brag that you are his special friends. Yes, you know what he wants. You know right from wrong and favor the right because you have been taught his laws from earliest youth. You are sure of the way of God that you could point it out to a blind man. You think of yourselves as beacon lights, directing men who are lost in darkness to God. 
You think that you can guide the simple and teach even children the affairs of God, for you really know his laws, which are full of all knowledge and truth. Yes, you teach others. Then why don't you teach yourselves? You tell others not to steal. Do you steal? You say it is wrong to commit adultery. Do you do it? You say don't pray to idols and then make money your God instead. You are so proud of knowing God's laws, but you dishonor him by breaking them. No wonder the scriptures say that the world speaks evil of God because of you. Being a Jew is worth something if you obey God's laws. But if you don't, then you are no better off than the heathen. And if the heathen obey God's laws, won't God give them all the rights and honors he planned to give the Jews? In fact, those heathens will be much better off than you Jews who know so much about God and have his promises, but don't obey his laws. For you are not real Jews just because you were born of Jewish parents or because you have gone through the Jewish initiation ceremony of circumcision. No, a real Jew is anyone whose heart is right with God. For God is not looking for those who cut their bodies in actual body circumcision. But he is looking for those with changed hearts and minds. Whoever has that kind of change in his life will get his praise from God, even if not from you. And so that's really something to think about. It's, a, it's a, again, telling us that, um, well, mostly speaking to the Jews and Jewish people and how they know the laws, then they know right from wrong, but they're still not doing, they're still not accepting it within their hearts. They, they're still uh, lacking because, you know, for whatever reason, of course, we don't know that. Only God knows other people's hearts and he works in our hearts which is why we have to tell others about the good news about Jesus so that um, they too can come to him and accept him, accept his good, his um, free gift of salvation. See, if we don't tell other people, well, they say that that means that we'll have their blood on our hands. But if we don't tell other people about the good news, then they'll never have that chance to come to Jesus. And then when the time comes where he, he takes away his bride, they'll be left here. And I, th I, I pray that there is going to be um, hope for those who are left behind. But if, you know, if, they're, if they don't at least know that knowledge before that time, then they're going to end up taking the mark and they're going to end up being condemned for life. And I I don't want to see that happen to people I love or even to strangers. I don't want to see it happen. So that's why I'm here. That's why I'm making these videos and I'm sharing the gospel with other people. I'm sharing the word for anyone out there who who doesn't have a Bible or maybe just wants to hear somebody else read it I'm that's why I'm here I'm reading this and I'm trying to share with maybe so that I could at least reach one person because I know that even just one person would spread it to others just like if you've ever seen that movie pay it forward well that's a great movie and if only people actually it's only a good it's a good movie because it it's being kind to one another and that's a good thing so i hope you enjoyed this this uh episode of chapter a day uh please like and subscribe <laughs> please like and subscribe um until next time